Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Dawn Shade by Ty Vance and Jet Riker. It is by Highborn Games, and it plays two to five players. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours to play, and it's gonna have a campaign mode. So you're gonna go from story to story throughout this large epic campaign that can be played multiple times, as well as separate, separate things you can do as well. And in the game, you're playing as a Petarukin, which is a small forest like creature who is basically insignificant for the most part until suddenly the high priestess of your village decides to take you and your lifelong friends and a special unique girl that is said to bring the connection to Dawnshade together so it's going to bring the balance to this world and you have to go on a quest with your friends which is the kinship that you form or the the fellowship however you want to look at it and you're going to go out and advance throughout the world and uh, accomplish goals and uh, find some unique adventures throughout the game each player is going to get a large player board which is going to have different stats whether you're attacking or defending or using unique things uh, that you'll be rolling for like for instance they have the character with the devotion which you'll be rolling these yellow die which will give you some crazy bonus abilities and whatnot you'll be moving along this board interacting with unique mini games that involve dexterity that will also involve a little bit of press your luck and chance as far as rolling die goes and flipping over cards and hoping you succeed in certain areas there's going to be uh, this battle bots type event that will take place. This is called the Boomshot Gallery. You'll be flicking things on this. You'll be rolling things. It's going to have a lot of different crazy mini games in the game Dawnshade. I'll show you down below what the components have, what it comes with, I'll give you a, a slight example of how the game is kind of, how it kind of functions and what you can do in the game. And then we'll come up and give you my review because this is so big. We're not going to go into full detail and I'm sure there's plenty of videos for that. Nonetheless, which we'll talk about anyway, at the very end, my review, and then whether or not you guys should pick it up down below in the comment section. So here we have the massive game of Dawnshade, and this comes with quite a bit, but it's not actually that extremely complex as far as setup goes. It's just that there's a lot of things as far as the player boards go. So we'll talk about the components first, and then we'll go on to the basic setup, and then I'll give you a rundown of how a turn works and what you can do. And during my review portion as well, I'll really get into the meat of the game because there's just so much to talk about. I don't want to just the rules jab at you for 10, 20 minutes, which I can easily do with this game. Uh, first, there is this board here, which is your village board. It's going to have a lot of upgrades and whatnot that are going to allow you to do certain things as you progress throughout the game. You won't see this board or use this board all that much to begin with, but it will become fairly useful as you move on. This board over here is your battle board which will be used in certain dexterity com competition modes as well as flicking and spinning and all kinds of good stuff like that you'll be battling bosses and whatnot with this board and it's going to have a lot of uses as you're moving along on this board here additionally on the opposite side is going to be the boom shot gallery which is a flicking game of sorts where you're flicking your little cog bots onto this board here to gain uh, these different tawny, which are basically the currency of the game, or unique beneficial things if you can get the closest to the middle of the, the circles on this board. Uh, additionally, there is the round tracker at the top here, which will start at five. Over here is the quest board. The quest board is unique based on where your starting village is, and based on that, we'll have these certain little circular tokens, which uh, there's a bunch of extra ones set aside, based on where you placed your starting village. And there's always a starting village, and there's always a kinship. And the kinship is going to go straight on the board after your village has been placed. There's always a man, there's always a lighthouse, there's always a village and a kinship, which I... Well, maybe some of the comments will let me know if they know what I'm talking about. Anyway, over here is the Dawnshade uh, Vaki board. It is where the kinship will be doing things cooperatively. There's the threat tracker, which will dictate when the game or the scenario will end. Uh, there's also the XP bar and the leveling system. When you hit 10 XP, you'll gain a level. When you gain a level, you'll get training points. You have the Dawn and the shade die. These are used for various things throughout the game, and you're always gonna to wanna to try and achieve balance. Dawn and a shade. Never shade shade, never dawn dawn. Based on the amount of players in the game, you'll get Vaki. Vaki is basically mana, and mana has two tiers. The first tier being the blue, yellow, and red. Second tier being green, orange, and purple. And based on the color, we'll determine those tiers, as well as how many start. These, uh, little, these little things here, uh, is the alignment. And the way alignment works is pretty simple, actually. You can spend money throughout the game to move your alignment, as well as um, 
when you achieve an unbalance or um, an unbalance where one is aligned more than any other ones, you'll have that specific alignment, which is going to provide certain things. If more than one, but not all, but not one specifically is uh, aligned with you, it would be, you'd be unaligned. So if you had this at two and this at two and these were all at one, you're not aligned with anybody. So you kind of want to be either balanced with perfect balance throughout the table, or you want to have one specific faction that you're working with throughout the game but they use a whole bunch of stuff here and you'll be using these training points to do stuff on your player boards uh speaking of player boards these are the player boards here each player will get one you're going to be getting your character which is this little guy here you'll be getting cog bot tokens for your character which are these guys here you'll be getting a little deck of cards which are these cards here which you'll use for fighting and battling and all that other good stuff uh, each character is going to get their own three unique die, which are their skill die, which you'll place off your board, and you'll gain them as you spend training points on those. There's also certain stats you'll get, like defense, um, devotion, agility, attack, as well as uh, health and items, and you'll be getting those as well throughout the game. Each player is also going to have these attack, these Vaki, and these defense die that there's going to be in a pool that everybody can use. And that's mainly the player boards. So the other stuff is just a bunch of things you're going to be using, whether they be Cogbots or tokens. You're going to have a bunch of money, uh, which are Tawny. You have a bag you'll use for initiative. There are the different quests, which are going to be different every time you play, because you'll be making your own specific quest deck. And then you're going to have shield and HP markers, which are your main things you'll use throughout the game, and a bunch of unique player status effects, which usually go through a turn, and they're going to give you specific bonuses, debuffs, or buffs, depending on how you choose to go throughout this game. Because in the game is ugh, a logbook, and the logbook is like a choose-your-own-adventure campaign of sorts where you're going to go through them and as you as you go through certain events you'll make choices as you go through certain battles you will decide how and what you want to fight based on the number of players etc and then at the end of the game based on what your level is you'll go through a major threat and because the game allows you to level up certain ways and you're going to be getting different levels as you play throughout the three games for each of the campaigns you will eventually fight unique and different major threats that you go through. It comes with a rule book, it comes with item decks, which you'll be purchasing, and then uh, I think that's pretty much it. A bunch of extra little tokens that you can go ahead and utilize throughout the entire game of Dawnshade. Uh, to set the game up, I mainly talked about most of it. Go ahead and put a round marker over here, put this little token here, unbalanced. Every single one of these alignments, like World of Warcraft, how you have an alignment with a certain faction, these little bars here focus, focus the same way. Uh, this is number of players times uh, one, and this is number of players times two for tier uh, two and tier one. And then all your threat level and XP are all at zero. Place your Dawn Shade markers here. Place all these little cogs in the starting position. Place the die off of the board. Get your character with three HP. Start your kinship here with your village. Place these based on what the log says. This is probably incorrect. And set your battle mat aside, set this up aside, set these out so that you can be purchasing them. And then there's a quest deck, which you will be basically placing down on your turn that will allow you to progress throughout the game. And then you're pretty much set to go in the game Dawnshade. So let's go ahead. I'll just discuss a little bit about how the game plays and what you can do in the game. And then we'll come up and, and go through my review. So because there's so much to go through and I don't have a huge amount of space here, I'll just tell you what a player turn kind of looks like. And the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have an active player marker, which is this little handy dandy guy here. And you're going to put it on a player board. So I'll put over there that you can't see anyway. Then you're going to go ahead and move to uh, a location. And you're going to move to the starting village, which is this one here, which can actually count as any outpost. Don't forget that. That's important. Or you can move to a new quest tile. Or, or an outpost that's already there. You can only move to outposts or a new tile or the village. Everything else, you can't go to another battle again. You can't take another event again. You'll have to move on. And this deck is going to be set up in the logbook how it tells you to. But in general, there'll be different events. There'll be different watch tower uh, temples. There will be different outposts. And you're going to have a battle and even a major threat that you're going to set at the very bottom of the deck. So the village will be on top and major threat on the bottom of the deck. And then you're going to go ahead and flip over a card and then put it anywhere you want as long as it connects and the paths, paths match. It's very, very intuitive. Move your kinship to that location and based on the amount of steps you took. So for some reason, if you took, oh, I don't know, if you were over here, if you were over here, 
and you took and you placed here, you would go two. In this case, you're just going one. Why is that important? Well, because you're gonna move your thread up and this is your little threat tracker based on the level of difficulty in the game. It is how you'll move this little guy up. And if it hits a certain point, the major threat is just gonna flip over and you're just gonna simply have to deal with it. So be aware that threat makes a difference in the game based on the difficulty level. Okay, and then after you've done that, you've increased your threat. Uh, you're going to go ahead and check to see what the quest or thing to do is. In this case, that would be a battle. And I'm not going to go into battles very much because we'll talk about my review, but basically you're going to be getting dudes, you're going to be getting battle stacks, and then you're going to be getting shields or health and, and shields, and you'll place them down in some type of order, in which case you're also going to have your own characters and their health and potentially their shields, and you'll place them down in this area here, and you'll be rolling dice and battling. That's one thing you can do with battling. Another thing that could happen is perhaps an event. And we'll go ahead and pick one of these guys here. So let's say I have an actual way of getting into there. Sure, like that. So let's say it was an event instead. You would actually take this log book here. You would go in, look for the events section. And then whatever event it was, whether it be 9 or 10, you would read that, choose one of the choose your own adventure sections, which is uh, follow the route, investigate the dwelling, or do a cat cog battle or cog bash. In which case you do something unique that way. Uh, so instead of, let's say we got this one instead, here's the event and the event said, we're going to do a type of cog battle. So instead of doing a battle, there are mini games and the mini games have a bunch of different things you can do with them. Some of them are, you can stack these guys up here like this. They'll tell you in the log book how it works but your objective will be to get through, I don't know, a certain area. So from this side to this side, you might be rolling your cog and attempting to go all the way through, which I'm gonna be terrible at, because I'm also rolling, rolling from the side, but come on, baby. <laughs> anyway, let's just imagine this guy going through this way and going through here. And if you can accomplish that, you'll get prizes. So there's that thing that you can do. You're going to be doing stuff that will involve flicking onto this board here, whether it be that little thing I was telling you before, where you flip this guy over. And you're gonna be flipping this thing onto this, trying to get as close to the center of these circles as you can to score for the boom shot gallery. There's other challenges where you're gonna have bots that are coming down from over. So you had bots like these right coming here and they all have their own certain amount of health and on a player non-active player's turn they can put another bot down they can move a bot and they're basically going to try and move towards you while you at the same time have your cogs and you're flipping them trying to get them to land next to or on top of the bad guys uh the bad guys little chip stacks here and you'll actually have a big stack of these red guys here and you'll be flicking Eh, actually, not so bad for you backwards. So there's a bunch of mini games like that that involve the event. Some of them are uh, going to be skill challenges where you're going to roll based on your community game because this is fully cooperative. I know that I didn't say it, but it's kind of intuitive for the most part that you're going to be working together to achieve victory, to go through and do certain things. There are other locations that are like different. Let's see here. I'll go ahead and pick one of them. Here's an outpost. That's the boom shot gallery. Here's an outpost. That's the tavern. Some things will allow you to level up and you'll be spending training points to level up. You'll be getting XP, which will hit 10, which will give you a level, which will give you more training points to level up. You'll have all these tokens to level up uh, that will move in a clockwise direction, going uh, around and based on certain stats will tell you how many die you can roll. You're gonna have these die here, which are ability die that let you roll and spending these things here, Vaki, in order to use these cards here, as long as you have those die, that does damage and lets you function throughout battle, throughout combat. The major threat's eventually going to pop out whether you want it to or not, in which case you're going to go through some type of battle, which is also a choose your own adventure aspect throughout the game, and so on and so forth. There's a lot to this game, but it's actually relatively simple because all you need to focus on is flip, basically moving, pl placing and moving, upgrading the threat, doing whatever the space says, whether it be an event or whether it be a tavern, or whether it be a boom shot gallery, or whether it be just a fun type of mini game, like a cogbot battle or something like that, up until the major threat and try and level up as well. And make sure you use your points as best as possible until you come to the threat, in which case you fight. And then if you want to, you can take a picture of everything, save it all and play the next mode in the campaign or save it for later. Like a lot of dungeon crawls do this one, just being a very unique cooperative game that does that as 
well in the game dawn shade okay it's enough going on about the rules i know there's a lot i'll probably put it in a link so you guys can go ahead and just talk to sh push to the review if you want but let's go ahead and discuss dawn shade and what i think of the game and whether or not you should pick this game up all right so let's discuss dawn shade now this is a cooperative game that plays from one to five players i have four player boards but the log says that there is five so i'm going to assume that there is five basically that group of players you're playing with is the kinship and this story has this like very fantastical high fantasy feel it's got a little bit of the lord of the rings and fern goalie and it's got attachments to a lot of really beautiful vivid artwork and imagery from classic times and this artwork here is excellent now uh, of course the story does greatly change as you play and i won't be giving any spoilers away for the game other than what you already heard at the very beginning which you are basically going around with this uh, person or thing whatever you want to call yourself and you're attempting to uh, create balance in Dawn Shade, right? And that's by going through events and, and, and interesting things that you can do along the way. The game's rather simple, right? It tells you move the active player marker, move to the starting village, or a found, or a, what do you call it, a, a outpost, or you can go to a new tile, set the threat, do the tile, and then complete the quest, earn the rewards, and pass the, the marker. And the marker will tell you when they pass for the most part as well. All the boards, beautiful, thick, quality and style of the game so in its simplicity there is a whole lot to look upon so when you see this game pops out and looks like an epic game players i've seen this played at conventions and people have been showing them off at highborn games to play this game and the games were always filled the tables were always filled with players and everybody was playing the game it had beautiful imagery and artwork everywhere and so it was very drawn i was very drawn to this game as well i instantly wanted to try this game but it was always filled and i always had to reschedule with them and then i got busy and so finally i had the opportunity to play it for this specific review and we'll do a stream as well regardless though the quality of components are beautiful and so is the artwork and in the the mix-up of the two is nice you're using this has got really high quality chips high quality player board the, the the different boards and whatnot i'll go and pull this off to show you very very nice this box oh, gorgeous and big the inserts are really nice as well like for a prototype if that's what this is it is good and this is what i would play with as uh the game being in its finished production stages there's also a ton of components for different monsters and the different bots you're gonna be fighting with and using to do different kinds of crazy mini games honestly this game has a ton of mini games and actually i had to get out a bunch of pieces of paper while playing the game because whenever we come to a specific mini game i would be like okay which mini game is this one? Oh, this is one that does this and then i could use it as a small reference they do provide a reference in in here somewhere as well as of course you can go with the logbook but i always like to write my own little notes as well and so with that mini games there's just a ton of variety of different dexterity style games and luck based games and then strategy based games and we're going to come to choosing your own adventure as well that has a huge beautiful logbook this thing has a ton of different campaign choices this one's kind of different than a lot of ones i played like this war of mine or arabian nights in which as you level based on whatever event you're doing or whatever combat or whatever major threat there's going to be certain things that you'll be able to choose so you might come across event two the island and it might give you one or two choices to do. Maybe you won't come across that event again until your next campaign, which is after you play a total of three specific scenarios. Uh, and there's a total of, I believe, like 20 of those different events with the different choices. So it provides a bit of replayability there. Uh, there's also the different starting villages, which will change the game's play, as well as the different battles. And then, of course, the threats. And the threats are going to be based on your level, and based on your levels, what threats you'll face as you go throughout the story and through the campaign, which is going to be different as you can play each different campaign based on your max level and how you do throughout the game, because as you play, you're likely to get better. And then there's the rulebook for the game, which explains everything very, very well, very, very easy to understand, and they have a nice tutorial online, which is a, I'm hoping they'll present to you guys so that you guys can see that as well. It was very helpful for me. The setup for the game is rather long and it has a little bit of a process to it. I wouldn't say it's overly complex, but I would say that it, you would need to be a moderate to heavy style gamer to get it. Maybe it's a moderate style gamer. 
a lot of the things are very intuitive as to where they go, but you need to make sure that you make a specific deck when you start the game. You'll have to place the certain tokens on the certain places on the board. And then, of course, there are some interesting things I'm not too fully aware of yet, because there's a lot of stuff in the campaign, or at least some stuff, that is not fully there in this for me. There's going to be, like, legacy aspects of the game, which I didn't get to dig into too much, and a lot of the items for, like, Tier 3 I didn't get to jump into, because you have to play quite a lot of the game in order to start breaking into the better items as you go. And also, what you run into is going to be different every time. You might not even run into certain types of these quest items, quest locations, because you don't use a whole lot of them every time you play the game. There's a target deck, which is also interesting as well. When the bad guys target you, you're going to have this deck that you're going to use, and <laughs> this deck has multiple uses because it's also used in a mini game that involves that game where you're like trying to get into the temple as far as you can and then escape somebody will remember that game but it has that little mini game involved as well as of course the bad baddies are going to try and fight the players based on a targeting system that is used throughout this game <laughs> so there's a lot of multi-purpose in this game that's used as well uh, i want to talk about the fact that this is had a lot of dexterity in it so it's one thing i kind of had to write down my notes to remember because Personally, I love dexterity games. I like to flick them up and whatnot. And that game is a dexterity game all on its own. This one is kind of like, it's kind of a designer's like, how he went from, started with this idea and you could see the growing world and the expanding content and the new ideas that pushed forth throughout this game as it was conceived. And you can also see the length of time put in to making this game over a period of time because you have classic mechanics in the game, you have newer mechanics, and then you have interesting mechanics I haven't seen before, like the stacking. These are the battle stacks, which is my favorite thing about the game. So unique, so cool how it's played. We have shields, then you'll have health attached to a character, which might be writing another character, in which case you'll put that stack on top of that stack and then you're always going to fight and when you fight you're removing the health from the the characters and when one falls off then you'll have another character uh one of the bosses i fought was actually riding on another character i don't want to give any spoilers too much away but it was cool how you had to fight them and certain bosses aren't even really trying to fight you because based on certain aspects of the game you might not they might just try and be trying to defend themselves from your onslaught and if you can't defeat them and they have more points than you do you will lose but losing this game is okay as well. Cooperatively, it's fine because you're still going to get stuff up until the point where you get to the final battle. And there's defeats and there's victory options. So it has a lot of that player choice. You're never feeling like, oh, I got to start all over again. It's always progressing. The story is always moving on. And this game's story is more important than anything else, in my opinion. Because as you go through, you start feeling like you're part of the characters. And this world starts coming to life in the game of Dawn Shade. I want to keep my character alive. I want to help my other players. And then also there's certain times where they're just playing against you for fun to try and help the, the kinship out, even if you they think you might fail which is really cool with certain mini games. You'll be rolling, you'll be flicking, you'll be spinning, and all of that can be a positive or a negative for you based on what you prefer in the game of Dawnshade. For me, I really, really enjoy these aspects of the game. There is a bit of luck, a little bit of chance as far as a lot of the battle goes, but that'll increase as you progress throughout the game and losing doesn't guarantee you a loss, right? You're still going to get Tawny, which is the currency. You're still going to get experience. It might not be as much. It might make the game a little more challenging for you, but that comes with the moving throughout the story and being able to choose the different items. And there's so many items that they give you in this game and the fact that you're not going to use a whole lot of them, which is so nice about how many different options you can have for the different players. And all of these will do different things and make your character very unique and spe specific to you. In fact, characters are very specific because each of them has their own unique die, their own unique special ability, and they have an overdrive ability. When you start missing a lot, you'll increase your misses and then you can blast off with your next special ability to do something serious, some serious damage. The player decks interact in a different way as well and all the baddies feel different and function differently in the game of dawn shade i could go on and on talking about this game because there's so much to talk about it and really for the most part i think players who see this game and like the artwork and enjoy a dexterity game with an rpg like a jrpg fashion where you're moving around you're discovering and you're working together to meet a common 
objective while defeating the big baddie and moving throughout scenario to scenario, you're going to enjoy this game. It's probably not for the most younger players. It's probably not for the most heavy war gamers either. If you don't like luck, if you don't like chance, if you don't like dexterity, this is something that probably you want to avoid. But for those of you who like a dexterity game, who love beautiful artwork, who love the ability to do pretty much whatever you want in this world that is being created as you play it, Dawnshade is the game for you. I strongly recommend it for those of you who enjoy games like this, like myself, and I want you to go ahead and take a look down below in the comment section. It's currently on Kickstarter where you can go ahead and pick it up right now, Dawnshade. I love the name of the game too. I've said it so many times because I just love it. So much quality. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for this game. If you're interested, like I said before, please do check the game out down below. This is a wonderful game and it deserves to be funded. Also, go ahead and check out my website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're gonna give away the game Chartered, The Golden Age, which you can go ahead and win right now. You are so excited, you're like, what are you doing? I'm filming an outro is what I am doing. And also go ahead and check out our live streams. We'll be playing this game on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. If you're watching the game, this video, the day the, the game came out. So you can go ahead and know for certain whether this is something you want to pick up or not playing it on the live stream. Thank you guys for a lot of fun with us at the Facebook page. Also in the description down below. Maybe I'll put in the comments as well. And we really, really appreciate you guys. If you want to go ahead and like, subscribe and comment, push that notification bell button there. We do greatly appreciate it. And please do check out our Callie's Corner videos. If you want to get uh, informed as to some really cool, unique aspects like learning how to read rules or the best family educational board games. And you'll have a bunch of other topics that are coming out in that line of videos that I think is really, really good. And I think people are really going to enjoy that almost as much maybe as, as Don Shane. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. And as always, I look forward to visiting the world of Don Shade with you and my sweet puppy next time. Good job. He did a good job.